Hello sa aming mga grade 10 learners! So, I am Teacher V and welcome ka dito sa aking channel. This is my first time na gagawa ako ng video para sa mga grade 10. Kasi before, ang mga videos na ginagawa ko is for grade 7 to grade 9. So, I hope na makatulong to para mas lalo mo pang maintindihan yung module mo at yung mga lessons niya sa math. And don't forget to like this video, i-share mo rin sa iba na nakakailangan ng help or tulong sa mathematics. Okay, so our topic is about illustrating the permutations of the objects. So what is a permutation? So permutations is about the different possible arrangements of set of objects wherein order is important. At sa permutations, meron tayong tinatawag na factorial. Yung factorial ay sinusulat natin in an exclamation point. Ito siya. So, sa English, exclamation point siya. Ibig sabihin, intense emotion, di ba? Pero sa math, ang factorial, ibig sabihin yan is, it talks about getting the product of a positive integer and all the positive integers less than the given integer. If we have 8 factorial, just take in our example, 8 factorial. So, kukunin natin yung mababa dito sa 8 at ita times natin siya. So, 8 times 7, then, i-times mo yung sagot na to sa mas mababa pa sa 7, which is yung 6. Then, multiply sa 5 hanggang sa makarating ka sa 1. Yun yung tinatawag natin na factorial. And, ang product niyan is 40,300. 20. Okay, so pag nakakita kayo ng ganitong symbol sa mathematics, hindi yan basta uh, exclamation point lang. May value yan or may ibig sabihin yan. At yan ang ginagamit natin usually dito sa permutation. So kailangan alam mo kung paano kumuha ng factorial para mas mapadali sa iyo yung pagcompute ng ating mga permutations. Okay, now let's have or understand the three kinds of permutation. Meron tayong tinatawag na linear permutation wherein you can simply use the FCP or fundamental counting principle process or concept to know that the possible arrangement that may be done to the given objects or subjects. So ito yung usually na ginagamit natin everyday yung linear per permutation. Later, papakita ko sa iyo yung exact example nitong linear permutation. Pangalawa, distinct or distinguishable permutation. It refers to the set of objects where some elements are alike and you want to know the possible arrangement of the given object. So, ito yung may mga kapareho siya. May mga elements sa set natin na kapareho niya at gusto mong malaman kung ano yung mga possible arrangement ng ating set or objects. And yung pangatlo is circular permutation. Maybe you have an idea about the meaning of circular by the word circular, so circle. So this is used when you want to know the different possible arrangement of objects in a circular manner. Alright, so para mas maintindihan natin yung tatlong klase ng permutation na yan, let's have our example. Unahin natin yung linear permutation. Ang formula natin para sa linear permutation is n factorial over the difference of n and r factorial, where n is the total number of elements given, r is the number of objects taken at a time. And remember, n and r should not be a negative integer. Let's have an example. If you create a four-digit password for your phone using the digits 4, 8, 2, 3, and 9, if there is no repetition of digits allowed, how many passwords could you make? Ano kaya yung example to ng permutation? Yes, you're correct. This is an example of linear permutation. You're going to create a four-digit password out of this five digits na numbers. And may mention dito na no repetition of digits is allowed. So ilan kaya password yung mabubuo natin? So, we can now apply the formula for our linear permutation. Ang ating n is 5y 
because there are five digits given. Yung 4, 8, 2, 3, and 9. So, five digits. So, yung total elements natin is 5. Now, for our R, ang value is 4. Why? Because the password that will be made is 4 digits. So, 4 digits yung gagawin na password. Kaya, R is equal to 4. Tandaan, sa formula ng linear permutation, N and R lang ang kailangan nating hanapin. Right? Now, aside sa linear permutation, o sa formula ng linear permutation, pwede rin natin gamitin yung FCP method or yung fundamental counting principle method. Since ang password is composed of four digits, so naglagay lang tayo dito ng, let's say, apat na boxes uh, to show the digits that will be made para dun sa ating four-digit password. Next, since meron na tayong NNR, isa-substitute na lang natin siya dito sa formula. So, ang ating N is 5 and then yung R is 4. So, remember, N factorial over the difference of N and R factorial. So, ang N natin is 5. So, 5 factorial over 5 minus 4. Yung R natin is 4. Then, factorial. So, that's why we have 5 factorial over 1 factorial. Okay. Dito naman sa FCP uh, method, so you are given 5 digits to choose from. So, for the first digit of your password, you have 5 choices. So, sa una, syempre, dahil 5 yung given na digit, meron kang 5 choices para sa first digit ng password mo. Right? Kaya nilagyan natin yung 5 dyan. Then, next, Ito na siya. So, isimplify lang natin yung 5 factorial over 1 factorial. So, nabanggit ko kanina yung factorial natin. Para makuha mo yung factorial, you're going to multiply the given number dun sa kasunod niyang mababa sa kanya, which is yung 4. And then, i-multiply again sa mas mababa pa sa kanya hanggang sa makarating ka sa 1. So, 5 times 4, 20 times 3, 60 times 2. 120 times 1 is 120. So, that's why we have 120 here. And yung 1 factorial, obviously, 1 lang yan. Then, 120 divided by 1 is equal to 120. So, therefore, you will have 120 possible passwords to choose from. Okay, nakita natin. So, gamit yung formula natin sa linear permutations, nakuha natin yung mga possible pass, uh, the total number ng possible passwords na pwede niyang napagpilian. Balik tayo ngayon dito sa FCP. So, kanina, sa first digit ng ating password, lima yung choices natin, di ba? Kasi, lima yung given digits. Next, if you choose one out of uh, the 5 digits, then you will have 4 digits left to choose from. So, para naman sa second digit, so dahil nakakuha ka na ng digit dito sa first mo, anong susunod? Sa pakalawang digit mo, apat na lang ang makukuha mo. And ganun na rin dito sa kasunod, magiging tatlo, and then magiging dalawa na lang. So, multiply mo lang yan, applying the FCP, 5 times 4 is 20, times 360 times 2 is 120. So, therefore, you will have 120 possible passwords to choose from. Okay? Nakikita ninyo na pareho din naman yung answer natin. So, it's either of the two kung gusto nyo gamitin yung FCP or kung pwede nyo gamitin din yung ating formula para sa linear permutations. And note, for linear permutation problems, you can just have FCP method. Ibig sabihin, Pwede na rito na kahit hindi mo nagamitan ng formula, play mo na lang yung natutunan mo sa FCP. Alright? Pero it's up to you pa rin. And by the way, kung gusto mo pala ng mas mabilis sa factorial, pwede mong gamitin ang iyong calculator. Kasi meron din yan sa inyong mga scientific calculator. Pwede pwede nyo rin compute yung factorial niya. So, papaano kaya? So, let's say ito yung ating calculator. Diba, 5 factorial? So, i-click mo lang yung 5 sa inyong calculator and then ito, hanapin nyo yung exclamation point na symbol. Pindutin mo yon Okay, then automatic, masasolve mo yung 
factorial niya. So, 120. So, pwede rin. Pwede nyo rin gamitin yung inyong mga calculator para mas mabilis. Lalo na kung sobrang laki na ng mga numbers. Say, for example, 15 factorial. So, gamitan nyo na lang ng calcube para hindi kayo mahirapan. Okay, so going back to our topic. Ayan yung sinasabi natin na example ng linear permutation. Next, Paano naman yung distinct or distinguishable permutation? So, ito naman yung formula na gagamitin natin. N factorial over P factorial, Q factorial, R factorial, and so on. So, ano ba yung mga P, Q, R na yan? So, yung N, same case pa rin dun sa kaninang linear permutation natin, yung N is equal to the total number of elements given. While yung P, Q, and R, ito yung mga elements in the given object that are alike or yung same. So, ito yung mga elements na pareho. Okay, lalagyan mo. Depende kung ilan yung magkakapareho dun sa elements mo. Lalagyan mo siya ng factorial din. Okay, paano nga ba yan? Balik tayo sa problem natin, number 2. So, solve for the permutations of the letters in the word mathematics. So, kukunin natin yung permutation nitong word na mathematics. As you can see, may mga na doubling letters. Di ba? May doubling M. Dalawa yung M. Dalawa rin yung A. Dalawa rin yung T. Okay. So, ang solution natin dyan, so obviously, this is uh, an example of distinct or distinguishable permutation kasi may mga uh, same elements. Okay. Para makuha natin yung permutation nito, Ito yung ating magiging solution. Ang N natin is 11. Why is it 11? Kasi ang total letters ng mathematics is 11. ba? Then, yung P natin is equal to 2. Ano yung P? So, ito yung mga elements na may kapareho. Bakit 2? Kasi dito, sa mathematics, may dalawang M. So, 2M. So, 2 yung ating first uh, element na may kapareho, which is yung M. Then, yung sa Q naman natin is dalawa din. Kasi dalawa din yung T. So, 2 para sa dalawang T. And yung R natin is another element na may kapareho. And that is A. So, dalawa yung A. So, 2, 2 din yung ating R. So, isa-substitute natin ngayon itong NPQR sa formula natin. Ang N natin is 11. So, 11 factorial over. So, tatlong 2 yung meron tayo dito kasi tatlo yung elements na may kapareho. So, 2 factorial times 2 factorial times 2 factorial. And then, isi-simplify natin siya. So, 11 factorial. So, ganyan lang yan. 11 times 10 times 9. And doon makarating sa 1. And then, yung sa baba, 2 factorial, 2 factorial, and then 2 factorial. So, tatlong 2 times 1 yan kasi tatlo rin yung 2 factorial natin. Simplify na natin. Pag kinuha natin yung 11 factorial, ang sagot dyan is 39,916,800. Divide by 8. Bakit nagkaroon ng 8? Kasi ito ay 2, then times 2, times 2, that is 8. And then i-divide natin to Ang makukuha natin permutation dito ay 4,989,600. Basta itong distinct and distinguishable Permutation ginagamit natin kapag ka may elements tayo na given na pareho. Okay? Or the same. Next. And therefore, there are 4,989,600 possible permutations of the letters in the word mathematics. Okay, next. Yung isa is yung circular permutation. Ito mas madali lang to kasi ang given lang dito is yung n. Okay, yung n is the total number of elements pa rin. So, ang formula lang natin dito is the difference of n and 1 or i-minus mo lang itong n and 1 tapos kunin mo yung factorial nila. So, mas madali itong circular permutation. So, example, Lucille likes to rearrange things in their house. This time, she decided to rearrange the six different colored chairs in their dining room that fits in their circular table. How many possible arrangements would Lucille create? Okay, so makikita nyo isang given lang yung makikita natin sa problem, which is yung 6. 
So, six different colored chairs. So, anin na upuan. Ibig sabihin, yun yung ating total element or yung N natin. And gagamitin lang natin yung ating formula. So, since ang N natin is 6, so, substitute lang natin yung 6 na yan dito. So, 6 minus 1. Yung 1 ay nasa formula na natin para sa circular permutation. So, 6 minus 1 and then factorial. So, ang answer is 5. So, 5 factorial. So, na-compute na natin kanina yung 5 factorial. That is equal to 120. So, therefore, Lucille has 120 possible arrangements to create. Okay. So, makikita ninyo na ito yung mga sample ng problems natin na ginagamitan ng permutations. Okay? A set of uh, possible arrangement of a given object. And actually, napakaraming beses na natin na-encounter ang permutations sa buhay natin. And let's practice. So, identify the situations presented below to be an example of linear, distinguishable, or circular permutation. So, titignan natin kung Ano klaseng permutation yung mga given problem? So, let's say for number one, how many possible uh, arrangements can 10 different colored horses be installed in a merry-go-round? What do you think? What kind of permutation to? Okay, merry-go-round ay paikot. So, this is a circular permutation. Isa pa, isang given lang oh, yung available dito, which is yung 10. Diba? 10 different colored horses. So, this is a circular permutation. Number two, Sam's family want to have their pictures taken in a row. In how many possible ways can they arrange themselves? Okay, so magpipicture taking sila. Ano kaya klaseng permutation to? Ilang possible ways kaya nila ma-arrange yung sarili nila. Alright, so this is an example of, of what we call linear permutation. Next, Hannah picked the word extravagant out of the box and she is tasked to solve for the permutation of the letters in the word that she picked. So how many permutations would be possible? So tignan, titignan niya yung permutation ng word na extravagant. So ano kaya ang klaseng permutation to? Okay, makikita ninyo na may mga same element, ba? Yung A, dala, tatlo, yung A. This is an example of distinct or distinguishable permutation. Kasi may mga letters or mga elements tayo na may kapareho. So, ang gagamitin natin formula is for distinct or distinguishable permutation. Okay, so nakita na natin yung pagkakaiba ng tatlong klase ng permutations natin and I hope na malinawan kayo. Marami pang mga samples dyan sa inyong module, so basahin nyo na lang at pag-aralan. Ngayon, kung may mga questions kayo at nais pang malaman, iwan nyo lang yan sa ating comment section at sasagutin yan sa inyo ni Teacher V. Okay? Kita-kita ulit tayo sa susunod kong video. So, ipapaliwanag ko pa ng higit yung tukol dito sa mga upcoming videos pa pa. So, don't forget to subscribe and share this to your classmates and friends para sila rin naman ay maintindihan yung mga lessons dito sa inyong mathematics class. And by the way, you can follow me on Facebook. So, meron kaming uh, Facebook page so VTeach channel. So, doon ako nag- upload or nag updates ng mga videos ko so you can like and follow my page. Goodbye!